never met Jesus. So how did you spend the whole time with Jesus? I did. I wasn't there. You weren't there. No, we do know from the Bible, from what you're reading, yeah. that Paul never met Jesus. Paul never knew what Jesus looked like. Paul never heard what Jesus spoke like. And yet, apparently, on the road to Damascus, he knew it was Jesus he was talking to. Come on, man. What kind of logic is that? Did J.K. Rowling, when she wrote Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, claim to be inspired by God when she wrote it? No, she didn't. So how can you claim she was? Right. Did Matthew, Mark, Luke or John claim to be inspired by the Holy Spirit when they wrote their Gospels? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Not one of the Gospel writers claimed inspiration by God when they wrote. So how can you claim they were inspired? So forget Mark saying he's inspired by God. Mark doesn't even say my name is Mark. <laughs> something I don't need to say that well, you don't need to what you don't have to say I am Mark writing you don't have to say that why not can you not hear yourself I can hear myself okay so Mark doesn't say my name is Mark and then you say yeah Mark wrote it how do you know Mark wrote it with no reason. You should believe with evidence and fact and logic and intellect and reasoning and understanding. Alhamdulillah. The Bible is nothing to do with the Word of God. No, but you said the Bible is not a book of God, but it is. It's not. No? No. It is fabricated, but it is. No, it's not. It is fabricated. If it's fabricated, then it's not a book of God, is it? Yeah, yeah, what I'm saying is... That's it. That's your answer. If content is fabricated... Then it's not a book of God, is it? Yeah, but what I'm saying is... If you say it's not, we are. We should say it is, but it's fabricated. People just don't no, but even it, it, <laughs> if a book is fabricated, then it's not the word of God. Yeah. So we shouldn't say it is the word of God when it isn't. As opposed to the Quran, which is the word of God. How do you how do you base that? What do you base it on? Uh, how would you determine a book is the word of God? You tell me you are claiming to be. Yeah, yeah. So so what would you accept um, proof of for a, a book to be the word? Of God. Show me some proof. What would you accept? Okay, okay. First thing is the Quran claims to be a book of God. That's the first point. That's the start. That's the start. Okay. The Bible doesn't make that claim. Okay. So there's your start. Okay. The question we have to ask ourselves: Who could have authored the Quran? Who who could it have been? Was it God? Could it be the devil? Could it be men? Okay. Right. So we have to look at the Quran, look at the qualities, look what it possesses, and see first thing could the devil have authored this Quran? Are you a Christian or an atheist? Right. Do you believe the devil could have authored the Quran? Do you think it's possible? No. Okay. Do you think men could have authored the Quran? See what you're assuming that the fact that I take the Bible to be a work of God. No, no, I'm talking about the Quran. Talk about the Quran. Necessarily believe that the no, no. Quran is I'm talking about the Quran. So what I'm saying, you're asking me why I believe the Quran is the word of God. Yeah. I like you don't believe the Quran is the word of the devil. Yeah. I don't think it's possible to be the word of the devil. You've accepted that as well. Yeah. Okay. Do you believe the Quran is the word of men, or possible it could be the word of men? Abraham. That's the only possibility other than God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In as much as you claim the Bible is is the work of men. Right. So. So how do we determine whether or not the book could have been written by men or not? This is the question. Right. Now in science you have something called the falsification test. So when Albert Einstein brought his theory of relativity, he gave a three falsification tests which backed up his theory. Yeah? The Quran gives two falsification tests. Right. One of the Quran, one of the falsification tests is Allah says in the Quran. They say this is a book written by you or Muhammad. Then tell them and their people and all of mankind to to come together okay. and produce the same okay. or something like it okay. and when they can't and they shall never okay. then fear a fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for the disbelievers so the first falsification test by God Almighty is that you're saying man wrote this then get some more men or anyone you like get your computers get your laptops out get your bring your masters and languages together and you do it then. Whoever if you think this was done by a man, then you should be able to do the same. Okay, this is the first falsification test. No one has done that. Right. But it's not a fair falsification test for you or I. Are you an Arab? I'm not an Arab. Right. So I don't speak Arabic, so it's not a fair test for me. Okay. So the second falsification test, Allah says in the Quran, if this book was written by any other than Allah, anyone other than the Creator, inside you'll find many contradictions and error. 
Why is this? Because men make mistakes. Men make error. This Quran was revealed over 23 years. This Quran is not just uh, historical, it also contains science here and there. Okay. So the challenge is now, then if man did this over 23 years, where's the errors? Where's the contradictions? My friend, let me be There isn't any. If I were a teacher. Now, we also then look at what does the Quran say? Is there things in the Quran that no man in the 7th century could know? Because if there are things in the Quran that no man in the 7th century could know, then man in the 7th century goat herd is didn't write this. Yeah? Okay. Now in the Quran it talks about uh, Moses and it talks about Joseph. Okay. It talks about Egypt. Yeah, it talks about Egypt. Now, when the Quran speaks about uh, Joseph and the leaders of Egypt, in the time of Joseph, according to the Quran, the leader of Egypt is referred to as king. The king. Okay. In the time of Moses, the leader of Egypt is now called Pharaoh. Not king no more. So in the Quran, in, in the time of Joseph, it's Aziz, king. And in the time of uh, Moses, it's Pharaoh. So the question is this, why did the author of the Quran make this distinction? Why did the author of the Quran determine that when he's speaking about Egypt in the time of Joseph, the leader of Egypt is king, and in the time of Moses, the leader of Egypt is Pharaoh? How did the author of the Quran know this? Now one solution could be, well he looked at the Bible, he looked at the stories in the Bible, and he copied it. Which is fair, but the Bible makes historical mistake. Because the Bible refers to the leader of Egypt in the time of Joseph as Pharaoh and in the time of Moses as Pharaoh. It makes no distinction. Right? Which in England we have Tudors and Stuarts. Yeah? Okay. In the time of the Tudors you cannot call the leader a Stuart. Yeah? Because it's not that dynasty has not come yet. The very fact that you're referring to the leader. I don't... I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Yeah? I'll tell you why. Because the Pharaonic dynasty did not exist in Egypt at the time of Joseph. But it came into existence in the time of Moses. And the author of the Quran knew that. So we have to ask how did the author of the Quran know this? The only way anyone could know this is by reading the Egyptian history. And Egyptian history is written in hieroglyphics. And hieroglyphics was a dead language in the 7th century. It only became resurrected science in the 19th century. And it's only after study of 19th century hieroglyphs that we know the history of Egypt. And we know at one time they were kings and then they became pharaohs. No man in the 7th century knew that as a fact. So how did the author of the Quran know that? As a fact. And not just say it, says if there's any mistakes or errors, then this book is not from God. Okay, but we established the fact that the Bible was written before the Quran. And the Hindu scriptures were written before the Bible. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So what, what's your point of, of that? What I'm saying is it refers to the king of Egypt at the time as Pharaoh. So. Right, but the king of Egypt in the time of Joseph wasn't Pharaoh. And the Quran makes that distinction. But the Bible doesn't. Coincidental. What, what's coincidental? Well, the author of the Quran knew that the dynasty of the Pharaohs did not exist in the time of uh, Joseph, yet he knew the dynasty of the Pharaohs existed in the time of Moses, and he knew that. Because I, I think that and he put it in a book that he's claimed there'll be no errors or mistakes. Yeah, he's got no way of knowing that. I think to base, to base what you claim on Well, one my claim I make from that is no man in the 7th century knew that fact. Simple. Okay, what, what's the second one? No, you want another one? Why oh, is that not enough? No, that doesn't oh, okay, okay. I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one that shows the historical inaccuracy of the Bible, yeah? So we know it's not plagiarized. Inshallah, see you next Inshallah, you take care of that. Okay. okay. See, I'd rather... You heard the story of Moses. You heard the story of the seas parting. You heard the story of the Pharaoh going through and the water crashing down. Okay. The Bible says when the water crashed down, the Pharaoh's body was lost. Yeah? The Quran says when the waters came together, Pharaoh was drowned and his body was taken out to be exhibited around the world. As an example to mankind. So the Bible says, Quran, the Bible says Pharaoh's body's lost. Quran says Pharaoh's body would be preserved. Yeah? 
I mean, the essence here is that he died. No. no. The essence is here is that he was removed from the water and he will be an example to mankind. Allah says in the Quran about Pharaoh that he will be taken from the water and he will be used as an example for mankind. Okay. Yeah? Now recently, well, what's the reason? A few years ago, there's a guy called Maurice Bokai. And he's a French Egyptologist. Okay. So we're talking about Egypt here. Let's stick to Egypt, yeah? And he heard about this mummy of Ramesses II okay. from the time of Moses yeah. was being exhibited. Okay. And it was coming to Paris. And he asked, can I, can I, can I um, examine the body? Okay. So when the body came, okay. he studied it. Okay. And his conclusion was, this man died from drowning. Yeah, when he when he studied, you know, the the, the autopsy, he says this mummy, this this Egyptian pharaoh, yeah. died from drowning. So we have a mummy here now of a pharaoh, okay. yeah, who died from drowning, okay. yeah, which is supposed to be the mummy from the time of Moses, yeah, okay. Ramesses II. Yeah. Okay. So when he made this this utterance, his colleague said, "I wouldn't let the Muslims hear you say that." And he says, "Well, why not?" It goes because. Their claim is that the body of Pharaoh was preserved. Okay. Whereas the Bible claim is it was lost. Okay. If you declare that this body would die from drowning, you'll back them up in what they claim. Okay. Yeah? Now the amazing thing about this body, this mummy, do you know where it's exhibited? Alexandria. Alexandria is the most visited tourist destination in the world. And this body doesn't just stay there. It tours museums. And Allah says in the Quran about this mummy, about this pharaoh, we shall make him an example for all mankind so it just happens that he's in the most exhibited exhibited in the most uh, visited the tourist destination in the world right and yeah he's exhibited around the world okay. so Morris Bukai was shocked by this this scientist this Christian scientist so what he did he went to Syria and for three years he studied Arabic and he learned the Quranic Arabic so he didn't have to rely on translation that he could read the Quran in its language yeah and what he did as a scientist he went through the Quran and anything that resembled science he would remove it so whether we're speaking about um, where the oceans meet the seas he was talking about how uh, clouds form rain he was talking about how the mountains are pegged into the earth he was talking about the embryology and the fetus forming in the womb and all of these things he would remove it from the Quran that chapter yeah then when he done that he would test each fact with what he had to hand to test whether or not these scientific facts were indeed true or not and this was his conclusion he says I as a man of science have removed the science what I found in the Quran and science in the Quran is not just in one chapter it's throughout it A to Z and I've tested what the Quran had claims and every single scientific fact that I've tried to test turns out to be true the way it's described all right then he went on to say now not only is science in the Quran A to Z but heaven and hell fire is in the Quran A to Z and then he said and I as a man of science cannot disprove the science in the Quran who am I to try to challenge heaven and hell fire in the Quran and then he said Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah and he became a Muslim right? why? because he knew that no man in the 7th century could have known, right? not just known could write about science and get accurate from 7th century to now because that's not how science works see the way science works is this man has a theory he has an idea about something but he can't test that theory yet until he gets the right instruments to test that theory so as we move on in history they get the ability to test that theory and to see if it's right or not sometimes it's right sometimes it's a mistake sometimes it needs tweaking this is why the theory of evolution has changed so many times now this is why we're on multiverse now from Charles Darwin right because they realize you're wrong and they change it here there and everywhere okay so science by nature is transitory yet the science of the Quran is as it was then as it is now and it's still accurate so we have to question how does a man in the seventh century not only know historical things he could have never known yeah and at the same time have all this scientific understanding in a time when he never had it yeah and it's proof that the Quran was meant to be read by you today yeah because 
The Prophet isn't here today. Yeah? The, the miracle of the Arabic is not really going to be influential today. But what should influence you today is the science. And because we're in 21st century. Now if you said to a man in the 14th, in the 7th century, look what the Quran says. It says the, uh, the, the, the moon reflects the sun. Yeah? Or it says, look what the Quran says. It says, when the baby forms in the womb and the stages of pregnancy and the leech like and yeah? Now, when the baby forms in the womb, yeah, it's visible to the naked eye. Yeah? You can't see the shape of the embryo with the naked eye. Okay? The Quran describes the shape of the embryo yeah, before the invention of the electromagnetic microscope. Up until the end of the 19th century, science of Europe believed that either the sperm contained a mini embryo or the egg contained a mini embryo. But the Quran had already explained the exact process. Now how did it do that? No man in the 7th century herding goats could do that. Impossible. So if, if man in the desert 1400 years ago couldn't do this, and you've already accepted the devil didn't do this, then who did? There's only one alternative. It's good. What I'm saying to you is... And as Sherlock Holmes says, when you eliminate the impossible, whatever's left, no matter how improbable, has to be the truth. You see, I, I don't take your, your argument that it has to be either or. Okay, okay. you tell me. You okay, tell me the... Okay, okay, okay. okay. The Quran exists, yeah? The Quran exists, yeah? It exists. Right, 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 right. What are the po who are the authors? Who could the authors be? Possibilities. I give you the options, you say there's more. I can, I can give you God. God? Or? That does not mean that God wasn't responsible for the Bible. Alright, all right. so you can see the Quran can be the word of God. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. With your Alhamdulillah. No that it okay. has to be one or the other. Okay. Alright. So now we'll dismiss the Bible, yeah? Okay. No, I have not dismissed No, I will. Alright, let's dismiss the Bible. Alright. First thing, the Bible never claims anywhere in it's the word of God. There ends its claim. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> Where? Where does the Bible say it's the word of God? Okay, I'll say to you again. The Bible doesn't claim to be the word of God, right? Harry Potter doesn't claim to be the word of God. I have no need to test Harry Potter as the word of God. I have no need to test the Bible as the word of God because it doesn't make the claim. It doesn't make the claim. The Bible talks about Jesus. Does the Bible make the claim it's the word of God? No. It does. Where? Everywhere. It talks about Okay, Jesus. give me one verse. Who is the son of give me one verse. God. Give me one verse. It doesn't have to talk about it. it give me one verse where that Bible claims to be the word of God. Who wrote the Gospel of Mark? Yes, Mark. Not God. But it's based on Who's the author of Mark? Who's what? Who got the, uh, the, the Who's the author? Who's the author of the Quran? God. You just established that. You just accepted that. Who actually wrote it? it? That's irrelevant. It's the same thing. No. Okay. Who authored Mark? So I have a problem. Okay. Who authored Mark? Would you? Uh, Who authored Mark? Mark. Right. Who authored the Quran? God. Who authored Matthew? Yeah, somebody had Who to authored write Matthew? It. Maybe God. Took Who authored Matthew? Somebody had to write it. Who authored Matthew? Matthew. Right. Not God. No, I mean the Matthew, Matthew. stories came from God or from oh, Jesus. No, the stories came from Matthew. Because Matthew is the author. Right. Who wrote Galatians? Who wrote Galatians? Who's the author of Galatians? No, I'm not. I, I didn't mention writing. I said author. Whose words are they? I didn't talk about faith. I'm saying to you, who is the author of Galatians? Paul. It's a human being that... No, not writing. I'm talking about who is the author? Who is the, the source of the words? Who is the source of the words of Galatians? Do you know what Galatians is? No, I don't. Okay, well it's a letter written by Paul, okay. authored by Paul, okay. to the ch church in Galatia. Okay. Right, what's that got to do with God? Nothing. Well, the idea is that he spent No, what, what do you mean the, what, the idea? Yeah. Okay, well, okay. Paul never met Jesus. So how did he spend the whole time with Jesus? The idea, I wasn't there, you weren't there. No, we do know from the Bible, from what you're reading, yeah. that Paul never met Jesus. Yeah. Paul never knew what Jesus looked like, Paul never heard what Jesus spoke like, and yet apparently on the road to Damascus, he knew it was Jesus he was talking to. Come on, man. What kind of logic is that? How do you know it's who he says it is when you don't even know what it sounds like or looks like? It's either scientific or faith. It's faith. Faith? It's, 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 it's the What's faith? What's faith? What's that mean? It's a belief in God. No, no, 
no, no, it's not. It's a belief in something that you no, no, no. Faith. Cannot... Look, look. Faith is believing in something that you can't prove. Yeah. I can prove to you. Paul wrote that letter. If you want to continue believing it, um, it was written by God, then you're delusional. He, he may have wrote it, but he may have, been, he may have been inspired by okay. God. Okay. He did he say he was inspired by God? He said. He just said he saw God. Did he say when he wrote that letter he was inspired by God? But you, you admit that he said he's, he saw God. Did he say he was inspired when he wrote that book? I'm asking you. No, he didn't you, see. You, you, he had a vision on the road to Damascus. He saw a light. He fell off his horse. He heard a voice. Yeah, but you, you yeah. just admit that he, he had... He, he had a... Oh, okay. Yeah? I have no doubt whatsoever in my mind yeah. that Paul had a supernatural experience on the road to Damascus. Okay. That converted him from his way of life to another way of life. I have no doubt about that. And I have no problems with that. But that doesn't mean it's God. Because the funny thing is, when Paul started speaking after that, he went against everything the disciples said. For example, for example, Paul says, no need for circumcision and eat what you like. No need to not eat pork, no need to kosher meat, eat what you like. Yeah? The disciples of Jesus held a council in the year 50 CE to determine whether or not new converts to Christianity, who were not Jews, had to keep the dietary laws and had to be circumcised. This is called the Council of Jerusalem. And at that council, it was determined by the men who walked with Jesus that yes, the new converts to Christianity had to be circumcised and had to keep the dietary laws. So why today do the followers of Jesus, Christianity, ignore what the disciples say and follow what Paul says? How does that make any sense? The men who walk with Jesus, who witnessed him, who watched his miracles, who he taught personally, come with me, come with me, come with me, you ignore. The man who never met Jesus claimed to have a vision on the road to Damascus, you believe everything he says. How is that the word of God? Nobody's ignoring them. Okay, so I'll say to you again. You've, conf you've accepted the Quran is the word of God. Yeah? You accept that the Bible doesn't claim to be the word of God. Well, you claim that on my behalf, I didn't. Okay, I'm telling you for a fact, it doesn't claim it. What right. You, you claim now, do you think if something doesn't claim to be something, you have to test the claim? Honestly. No, do you? It's, it's, it's a belief. It's no, no. But I have. If, I if, I'm going to use Harry Potter as my example. Let's say in 300 years' time. No, listen, 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 listen. It's respectful. I'll tell you why it's not, it's respectful. I'll tell you why it's not. Because the atheists mock us as religious people, right? The atheists say in 300 years' time there'll be a Harry Potter religion, just as there's a Jedi religion today, yeah? There'll be a Harry Potter religion and such and such and such. And they'll use Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and say this is a book of God. Yeah? Mocking us. Yeah? Okay. My question is this, very simple. Did J.K. Rowling, when she wrote Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, claim to be inspired by God when she wrote it? No, she didn't. So how can you claim she was? Right. Did Matthew, Mark, Luke or John claim to be inspired by the Holy Spirit when they wrote their Gospels? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. If they didn't, they implied it. They didn't. They didn't. They implied it. They didn't. They just lie. You're just saying things. They didn't. Not one of the Gospel writers claimed inspiration by God when they wrote. So how can you claim they were inspired? You can't. What they talk about is Jesus. What did they talk about Jesus? You're trying to claim they're inspired by God when they don't make that claim, so how can you put that claim on them? Forget that! Mark doesn't even say my name is Mark. Matthew doesn't say my name is Matthew. The authors of the Gospels don't even claim they are who you say they are. <laughs> So forget Mark saying he's inspired by God. Mark doesn't even say my name's Mark. <laughs> if I'm writing something, I don't need to say that. What well, you don't need to what? You don't have to say I am Mark writing. You don't have to say that. Why not? Can you not hear yourself? I can hear myself. Okay, so Mark doesn't say my name is Mark, and you say, yeah, Mark wrote it. How do you know Mark wrote it? If Mark doesn't say I wrote it. And, then, and here's the next question. Here's the next question, yeah? Who is Mark? There was no disciples called Mark. Who is Mark? <laughs> It's the same way that you haven't explained to me who wrote the Quran. I just told you who authored the Quran. Yeah, but who, you didn't say who wrote it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're talking about authored. Authored it. It's a recitation. Exactly. It's authored. It's a recitation. And that's just, that's just pushed down. Look, 
When the angel spoke to the Prophet Muhammad, yeah, he recited and the Prophet recited and then it was recorded by whoever, right? But the recitation, what the angel told him to say, is the Quran. And God gave angel the words to say, and the angel told Muhammad what to say, and this is how the Quran is revealed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 For the well, the one who authored the Quran is relevant. Right. And I'll say to you again, the author of Mark, the claim is Mark, and the author of Matthew, the claim is Matthew, and the author of Corinthians, Galatians, Romans is Paul, not God. That's why I say to you, the Bible is not the word of God, it's the words of men. As they attest. Based on what? It's not based on... <laughs> what? It's based on the message of God because of what they say, who don't claim to be speaking on behalf of God. Come on, listen to what you... There's a video, yeah? Watch it on YouTube, yeah? Listen to yourself. Yeah? Don't just say things. Okay, I'll, I'll, well, let me repeat what you just said. Let me just repeat what you said. These gospel writers never claim to be writing on behalf of God. You're claiming they were. I'm asking you why are you claiming they were when they didn't. Why didn't they make the claim? What did they write about? What did they write about? They were writing about sport, were they? No. They were talking about Jesus. Right. They were talking about Jesus. Was God talking about Jesus? No. In the Quran, in the Quran, God talks about Jesus. What? Who has more authority to speak about Jesus, men or God? Right. Who in the Quran? Who, sorry. Who in the Bible is speaking about Jesus? Men. No, men. We just said. Oh, why are you saying God? Mark. Mark is talking about Jesus. Mark. God was talking through Mark. Who said God was talking through Mark? Is that what Mark said? You're saying it. <laughs> Based on what? I, I listen, have you seen the X Factor? Have you seen the X Factor? Okay, well, I'll say something about that program, yeah? There are people who believe they can sing, yeah? And the reality is they can't. And you believing what you want to believe doesn't make it the reality. And you know what they call about belief? Listen, let me tell you about belief as well. Because you've used belief a few times now. Once belief hits reality, yeah? And you still want to believe it because it makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside, yeah? You now become delusional. So you, my friend, are deluded. So if you do, have, if you do happen to watch The X Factor, and you do see these people going, eh, 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 don't laugh at them, because you're just the same. 